Howdy folks, Dave Grenade here with J316 Horses. Me and my main man, Mr. Bex here, gonna bring you a little bit of a good word today. And share a little bit of, uh, share a little bit of scripture with you. Mr. Bex is not camera shy, that's for sure. So, let's, uh, without any further ado, why don't we just jump right in with a uh, word of prayer. Dear Lord, we thank you so much for everything that you do for us. We thank you for this wonderful day as we just celebrated uh, Memorial Day. We uh, are so thankful for the soldiers that have sacrificed their lives for us and our freedom. And uh, we just thank you so much, Lord, for all the beautiful gifts that you give us and all the, the wonderful lessons you teach us. We just pray that we can listen to your word and that we can learn from it and better our lives and most importantly better our relationship with you so that we can help others in jesus christ's name i pray amen all right well let's uh let's jump right in to where we're at here today what we're going to be talking about that was a little tricky Especially around feeding time. <laughs> We're not that far from the barn. He knows it's feeding time, but he's a really good boy. So we're talking about the limitations of the law. We're going to be covering, uh, we're going to be in Romans. We're going to be in Romans chapter 7 and Romans chapter 8 once we get to the actual scripture. But uh, what I wanted to talk about a little bit was, you know, um, in, in my family, we, uh, nobody actually goes by their real names. You know, we all have a, uh, we all have a nickname and, uh, I'm not going to embarrass my beautiful wife and tell her nickname to all of you, but, uh, I'll go ahead and embarrass myself. I go by Woody, um, and, uh, that's my nickname. I've got, uh, four beautiful children, Ansley, Dylan, Joe, and Haley, two boys, two girls, they are 18 to 28 years old and we have just been truly blessed and of course they all have nicknames as well um you know the crazy thing is even our dogs go by nicknames <laughs> it sounds uh sounds kind of crazy you know um but at the same time you know uh um uh, uh, now, of course, you know, um, as my my family's watching this, they're squirming in their seats. I'm not going to embarrass them. I promise. Uh, I promise I won't do that, even though uh, I gave out their names. Um, there was a time that uh, the family was driving down the road, and, my, and I was giving all the other drivers instructions out there. You know, like I do. They should be. They should definitely be listening to the way. I drive and uh, they should be listening to me giving them instructions and, uh, and my, my uh, giving them the laws of the road and my uh, my sweet wife reminded me that uh, you know this is a Woody's world <laughs> they don't have to listen to you um, and that was certainly back in my younger more impatient days not that uh, not that I'm perfect by any means now that I'm 47 but uh, I definitely am more calm, and uh, and I'm and I'm trying to become a uh, become a become a better person each and every day. So, what's the overview of the message? We all know that Paul was not afraid to keep it real and bring us back down to earth. Paul powerfully argues that the law of Moses stimulated sin and brought death. It's not the law's fault. God's law is good and holy but it is powerless to change our hearts and sin cannot be overcome by the law. Through God's Holy Spirit living in us, Jesus rescues us from the power of sin that ultimately leads to death. So if you think about that for a second, what is it? Why do we get so hung up in our earthly laws, right? I mean, if God's laws 
can't ultimately save us from death and save us from sin, it's funny how we sometimes get so enamored in our earthly laws and we forget about spiritual laws. So they led me to the scripture and I thought, okay, God, but couldn't you have given me something a little more flashy to talk about? As I was praying to the Lord and, and trying to, uh, to listen to our Father and, and, um, and let's give y'all a kiss, Mr. Bex. Um, I was trying to listen to the Father and he gave me this to share with you. I thought, wow, what a boring title. Limitations of the law. But it's really amazing. And, um, you know, I was hoping for something a little flashier like David and Goliath. I'm actually um, on a um, on a personal uh, journey reading the Bible from cover to cover. And I'm actually in, um, well, I've actually passed David and Goliath. I'm a little further along in 1 Samuel. But uh, it's funny, as I was reading that, I was like, man, how perfect is this? Uh, Every preacher talks about David and Goliath, but uh, but I get to talk about the limitations of the law, and it is uh, it's 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 amazing, you know, when God speaks to you and He gives you something to share, it's always the right thing. So here we go. Let's dive on into it. How does the law of Moses stimulate sin and evil desires? So as we look in Romans uh, chapter seven, verse five. I'm reading out of the uh, New Living uh, Translation. Verse 5, when we were controlled by our old nature, sinful desires were at work within us. And the law aroused the, these evil desires that produced a harvest of sinful deeds resulting in death. The instinct that lives in us, it's just kind of like, you know, I have a, my, uh, my dog, he is a, uh, his name is Duke. And he is a uh, German short hair pointer, and um, his instinct to hunt built in him. You know, I'd like to think as I went through the training, um, training with him, I'd like to think that uh, my training was unbelievable. But really, you know, most most training, whether it's dogs or awesome horses like Mr. Bex here, it's really about getting out of their way and tapping into their instinct that's already built within them and in using that beautiful instinct that the Lord has built in them to make them the best that they can be. So as we, as we travel into uh, a little further into Romans, we're still in chapter 7, or we're in verse 12. But still the law itself is holy. And its commands are holy and right and good. If you think about it, the devil tried to tempt Jesus with the riches of the world. This is certainly something that I struggle with. Um, I've struggled with my whole life as a young boy um, growing up in a, I would say, below middle class neighborhood. Very safe, uh, very clean, great people. Um, but, you know, certainly not the highest of incomes. Um, but I always had this burning desire to get out of the neighborhood and to make something of myself. And obviously, the desire is a good thing. Um, but it has to be channeled in the right areas. And as I learned took me 30 years to learn, but, uh, you know, I'm 47 years old now. I started, uh, I started my career at 17 and chased money and all the material things that come along with that for a long time. So if you think about Jesus, he was tempted just like we are. You know, he was a human being. Even though he was God, he came here and he felt the same emotions that we feel and felt the same temptations and the same uh, desires. And he was able to withstand those temptations. He was tempted far worse than we'll ever be tempted. He actually was 
out in the wilderness with the devil. And the devil tried to tempt Jesus with the riches of the world. When that didn't work, he tried to use the law to tempt Jesus by saying, if you are the son of God, prove it by jumping off. The scriptures say God will order his angels to protect you. So think about that. So there's two ways that the devil tempts you. He'll tempt you with riches, with money, with sex, drugs, whatever, whatever um, he thinks that will, will garner your attention. He'll tempt you with it. But when that doesn't work, here's what the devil does. So pay close attention to this. So when, so when that didn't work, he tried to use the law to tempt Jesus by saying, if you are the son of God, prove it by jumping off. The scriptures say God will order his angels to protect you. So think about that for a second. He's actually quoting real scripture. That's not, that isn't false. The devil's not lying. He's using God's word to try to twist it to tempt Jesus. But you got to love Jesus. He's always, he's always five steps ahead, right? Jesus refuses this temptation by telling the devil, the scriptures also says, you must not test the Lord our God. So think about that. You know, we see that a lot of times even in the church. Or even in, um, you know, people try to use God's word for evil. Just like the devil did in this particular instance against Jesus. He tried to use the scripture to get Jesus to prove that he was the son of God by testing the Lord. So... We have to always make sure that we use all parts of the scripture and not just taking certain things out of context. The law itself is a good thing, but it arouses sinful tendencies by provoking the rebellion in our hearts. When we are in rebellion against God, the law speaks, sparks a desire to do the exact opposite of what God commands. The law creates greater accountability to God and brings the power of sin to life, and the result is greater judgment. The law does not solve sin, it simply exposes it. We inherited a strong desire to sin from Adam, so when we are faced with the law, we naturally disobey them. We need a change of heart that the law cannot provide. We cannot evade the responsibility of sin, but since we want to do what the law says, there must be another factor that separates us from will to provide the law and actions to sin. That is the sin living within us. This is where the law is limited. So my personal connection, a few things come to mind in my own personal struggle with following the rules. You know, as I mentioned, I started my career at 17 and um, it was kind of like a rocket ship from there. I had a lot of success at an early young age and, um, and a lot of money that came to me quickly. And I noticed, I didn't notice, I didn't notice. I just got sucked up into the egos, the foul language, the drugs, the sex, money, the power of it all. It almost seems like a crazy movie as I look back. On my real life if you followed the rules in the line of business I was in you were a punk you were a weak you were a sucker there was no such thing as just keeping to yourself or being quiet or people would pick on you even more almost kind of like being in the jail yard you had to be cocky and one up the next guy all the time and that was the world that I lived in we would almost be rewarded for breaking the rules you know, it's not almost. We were rewarded for breaking the rules, and it gave you more street cred if you were wild and got away with it. So, being in the car business for 30 years, I, um, you know, I started at 17 and just left in this last February. And it's just this four months that I've been detached from it. It's been 
it's been amazing to see the uh, all the bad things that uh, were there and the sad thing is is it was masked by money and fame you know um, this isn't a uh, this isn't a deal where I'm gonna tell my testimony but that's a that's for another day but you know the short part or the the, the part of that is the sad part of that is, is that money and fame really glamorizes all the bad things that you do which is, is can almost be worse is to me worse than you know a person that let's say they struggled with a with an addiction and it was obvious that you know the problems that they were dealing with versus mine were glamorized and rewarded for the things that I were doing. Through God's Holy Spirit, Jesus rescues us from the power of sin that leads to death. So if you think about the power of the Holy Spirit, we're going to jump into Romans chapter 8, verses 1 through 12. Life in the Spirit, verse 8. Now there is no condemnation for those who belong to Jesus Christ. And because you belong to him, the power of the living, the life-giving spirit has freed you from the power of sin that leads to death. The law of Moses was unable to save us because of the weakness of our sinful nature. So God did what the law could not do. He sent his own son in a body like the bodies we sinners have. And in that body, God declared an end to sin's control over us by giving his son as a sacrifice for our sins. He did this so that the just requirement of the law would be fully satisfied for us and, who no longer follow, and we would no longer follow our sinful nature, but instead follow the Spirit. Verse 5, those who are dominated by the sinful nature think about sinful things. But those who are controlled by the Holy Spirit think about things that please the Spirit. So letting your sinful nature control your mind leads to death. But letting the, sin, but letting the Spirit control your mind leads to life and peace. For the sinful nature is always hostile to God, but never did obey God's laws, and it never will. That's why those who are still under the control of their sinful nature can never please God. But you are not controlled by your sinful nature. You are controlled by the Spirit, if you have the Spirit of God living in you. And remember that those who do not have the Spirit of Christ living in them do not belong to Him at all. Verse 10, And Christ lives within you, so even though your body will die because of sin, the Spirit gives you life because you have been made right with God. The Spirit of God, who raised Jesus from the dead, lives in you. And just as God raised Jesus, uh, Christ Jesus from the dead, He will give life to your mortal bodies by the same Spirit living within you. Therefore, dear brothers and sisters, you have no obligation to do what your sinful nature urges you to do. So as that Holy Spirit begins to grow within you so you think how do i get this holy spirit it's easy the first step is just accepting jesus christ into your life and he'll begin working within you and then as you dive into his word and your relationship grows with jesus on a daily basis and you allow that holy spirit to take over i'm here to tell you right now again it's in the testimonial for me but it's amazing, and it's real. It's as, it's as real as this 1,200-pound beautiful animal that I'm sitting on right now, Mr. Bex. The Holy Spirit is real. We're all searching for peace, but why can't we find it? Why is everyone on stress medication? This is one of my favorite parts that the Lord shared with me. Those who belong to Jesus do not have to fear that they will be condemned for their sins. The law is not a life 
life-giving entity. When we stop blaming our surroundings, economy, my finances, gas prices, my kids, my job, begin to look at, if we begin to look at the inside, God is waiting at that place for us. Mm. The Holy Spirit is a power that frees us of sin that leads to death. We are saved from God. <coughs> Let Mr. Bex get that out of his system. Whoa. Say hi to everybody. Wow, did you bite the camera? He'll knock it off of there. Crazy horse. <laughs> we are saved by God's wrath, by the sacrifice of Jesus. If you simply try to change your behavior on your own to follow the law and not sin, you will always go back to that sinful behavior. I tried this for 40 years, and trust me, it doesn't work. When you begin to rely on Jesus as your source, the Holy Spirit begins to live within you. The Holy Spirit will take over your thoughts, your desires, and will make it possible to resist the power of sin and live in authentic peace. And that's what we're all searching for. And I'm here to tell you right now, I've found it. And does that mean I don't have troubles? I don't have problems? Absolutely not. Let me ask my beautiful wife. I got a whole desk full of problems at my house, right? That right, Mr. Bex. Sometimes training these beautiful animals, you get a no, you get a whole uh, handful of problems. But that has nothing to do with your inner peace. That I get to enjoy every day every minute every hour every second of the day by my lord jesus christ and that's authentic peace our reward for any success or milestone in our lives is more work promotion so think about that you know we want like i as i was as i was going up the chain i remember oh man once i get there i make that kind of money it's all gonna be good no I just had more demands, more hours at work, bought more things, had more problems, had bigger bills. Now you get to manage more people. Your victory in war, once you get married, think about it. Ooh, that's when the real work begins, when you get married, right? Everybody thinks, oh, we're married. My beautiful oldest daughter, Haley, they're going on their third, fourth year now. They got him a brand new baby, our first grandson. Now the real work begins, right? <laughs> God is not a refuge from trouble. So this is where, this is really key, where a lot of us get hung up. Is we, oh man, Mr. Bex, pardon that. This is real life. I can't, I mean, hey, when it gets Western, <laughs> it gets Western. <laughs> I don't think we can edit that out either. It's right in the middle of it. <laughs> oh, Mr. Bex, that is beautiful. I mean, it doesn't get any more real than this, right? <laughs> so, you made me lose my place. So God is, this is, this is real key. And this is one thing that I'd say in the last 10 years as my relationship with the Lord has grown, I finally understood this probably in the last six months. God is not our refuge from trouble. God is our refuge while we are in trouble. Now, boy, you know, when I finally realized that, it's like, I don't ever have to wait. I get to my refuge is always. So when I'm in trouble, God's right there with me. He's not there waiting for me to get out of trouble. He's not gonna rescue me from trouble. He's in the fire with me at the time. That's so beautiful. So how do we get to have peace? As I learn how to rely on Jesus as my source for everything, the Holy Spirit began to live in me. Not just, not just on Sunday at church, Tuesday. Oh, hey, get up there, big boy. Right out of the camera. Not just on Sunday at church, but also on Monday, doing laundry. Tuesday, watching sports. Wednesday, hanging out with the kids. Thursday, riding my horse. Friday at work. Saturday. You get the point, right? 
when you're at the rodeo Saturday night having a good time with your friends. That's when the Lord's living in you all the time. And he begins to change you from the inside out. I've witnessed to the first hand the power of the Holy Spirit to not only change my thoughts and my behavior to follow the law, but most importantly, I've been able to accept the grace from God and get to a place of authentic peace and love through Jesus. Thank you so much for letting me share the Lord's word with you. If you don't mind, I'd like to end in some prayer. Dear Father, I thank you so much, Jesus. I thank you for allowing me to connect with folks. If this reaches one person or a million people, I don't care. I just pray that your word can help somebody today and help them get through some struggles and help them have a relationship with you and can help them help them be a better person, can help them in their job, help them with their family, with their children, with their wife, with their husband. And I just pray for those out there that don't know you, have never met you, that they seek you. They reach out to me, reach out to a church nearby them, reach out to a friend of theirs that's a Christian that believes in you and that can explain and and help them have a wonderful life. I love you so much, and I thank you for dying on the cross for our sins, Father. It's in Jesus Christ's name I pray. Amen. Thank you guys so much. We appreciate you uh, putting up with me and Mr. Bex here. <laughs> You're such a good boy. <laughs> he did way better than I expected. Uh, I love you. God bless you. And yeah, we'll see you on, on the next one.